Good morning. Good to see you all this morning as we gather together in this place to worship God. I noticed that the children did a good job of signing the attendance over there. You all got your names in it? Good job. So adults, you'll notice that there are attendance registration here in this center. And so if you're in the center section on the end, when it gets to you, do exactly like Steve just did, reach across the aisle so that we count our friends here on the end. There we go, oh, that's good. The ushers keep coming up with new and exciting ways in which to challenge us to do this. It is important though, we appreciate doing that, thank you. Next Sunday at 11.15, Modus Theater will be back, but they're bringing their justice story this time. It's about injustice in America. Um, the woman that you see there will be the speaker. You can read more about it in the bulletin, but I hope you'll stay after church next week to hear her. It will be a moving story and a moving time for us all to think about what justice might look like. On the 23rd, there's all kinds of good things happening on October 23rd. At nine o'clock, there'll be a question and answer session. Kevin and I are going to take a group of people and we'd love for any of you that want to come to Israel in May. Um, we're going to travel with Brenda Mihos. Many of you know Brenda. She used to be a member of this church and has made this trip many times. She is actually there right now. And we'll hear all about her when she gets back, if she felt safe and what it was like. And we'll also be traveling with Dr. Celine Lilly, who is a lecturer at CU, and her area of expertise is ancient church history. And the three of us met to talk about this trip, and we are excited. A lot of the focus will be on the Palestinians and what's happening for them in Israel. But we'll also see all kinds of sites. So come on the 23rd at 9 to learn more about that trip. Then after church, this is one of those mornings, just come and stay. After church, we'll have a town hall. Our church board will answer questions and talk about what's going on in the life of the church, followed by the board meeting. So board members, just bring your lunch. Just be ready to stay. I think that's all the announcements that I want to make this morning. Make sure you read your bulletin. Lots of things happening and gathering. I heard the choir singing. Oh man, that was a good song. And they're all excited because they're doing Handel's Messiah for us in December. So if you've been thinking, oh, I wish I could sing that again. They still could. Absolutely, the door is always open, especially looking for a couple of tenors and basses to fill out the choir. Just letting you know about that. Thank you. It's going to be great. Full orchestra and everything. Belinda's here to tell us what's going on in the mission world. Do you want to use that? Is that fine? Hi. I'm going to try to decrease from last month since I'm sure it overwhelmed everyone, but make sure and look in your bulletin and listen to the Friday or look at the Friday email blast because there's a whole lot of things starting to go on throughout the fall and they're real important. Just make sure and make note if you're wanting to make donations for the Hurricane Ian um, to the people in Florida and beyond look and it's got the information on how to make those donations. The three things I'm going to bring up though this time are this Tuesday, remember is the individual disaster preparedness and resilience evening starting at 7 to 8 30 here at church presented by Michael Moore from our church. It should be really good on preparing yourselves, your families, for, be, for any disaster or occurrence, okay? And so we wanna do that and make sure and invite your friends. The other two things, our crop walk will take place next Sunday. Remember, this is where people walk to provide food for people around the world through church world, world service and beyond through our church and many churches, they come together to earn, get money for people throughout the world to decrease hunger. So you can, there are jars out in the narthex to donate to, or if you want to walk also, it will be next Sunday afternoon at 2 p.m. And there will be a group that comes to death together at Atonement Lutheran Church, which is right close by. Okay? And the 
final thing for this month is Thanksgiving in the park will occur actually at the beginning of next month, but out that's November 6th, and that's where we give gloves and hopefully socks also to the homeless in the Banshell Park. We do it every year, and um, other churches, Lafayette and a girl, the Girl Scout troop from here in church are um, collecting hats also. So there is a table out there for you to buy gloves, $20 a pair. It provides really great gloves from Costco, better than what most of us have at home, okay? And that 20 is a little above what we have to pay to Costco, so that's how we get the socks. If we have all the gloves, which we have 70 pairs to buy, when we've bought the 70, the rest of the money goes to socks, okay? That's it for this month, thanks. Please stand as you're able for the call to worship. Jesus, you were a friend to the disciples. As we meet in worship, Jesus, you were a friend to the outcast and sinner. As we pray to you, Jesus, you were a friend to the sick. As we seek you today, our opening song for today is hymn number 596, Blessed Jesus at Thy Word. I hope that you'll sing strongly and bravely and confidently as you sing in parts however your heart desires. This is Blessed Jesus at Thy Word. you want to stand and sing with us too? That'd be great. The words are up here. Blessed Jesus at thy word we are gathered all to hear thee. Let our hearts and souls be stirred now to seek and love and fear thee. By thy teaching sweet to join us today. We've got a few things to talk about and then we've got something special to do. Here, I will sit in front of you all. Okay, so how do we, we have a good week? Yeah, so we were in school all week, right? Did you learn anything new this week? Maybe? Did you learn a little bit at least this week? Okay, well I have a better question. Do you think you've ever taught anybody anything? You think so? So Jackie, do you remember when Sylvie was a baby? 
Do you think you helped Sylvie learn how to walk and talk and eat her food? I bet you did. George, do you remember when Eddie was a baby? Do you think you helped him learn those things? I bet you did. I bet you helped him learn how to eat and walk and do that kind of stuff, right? What about you, Danica? Do you think you helped Ava learn all those things? I bet you do. That's the fun part about being a sister, right? What about you, Eleanor? Have you helped Hannah learn all that stuff? Yeah, I think so. And then those of you who are the youngest, Addie, do you think you learned a lot of things from your brothers? Yeah? Hannah, has Eleanor taught you quite a bit? And you get to teach your friends. That's great, too, Hannah. What about you, Julia? Do you think Annie taught you quite a bit? Okay, that, that's really good. Well, Sylvie, did you learn lots from Jackie? Okay, see, I'm glad that you all have learned and have also been teachers. Do you see our, our the screens? What is up there? Those are the pictures that you all drew of Jesus, right? Do you see that? Yeah, that was Eleanor's. That was a good one. You all did such great work on those pictures, and uh, Stephanie and the rest of the staff, they wanted to put them up for everybody else to see. So why do you think we have pictures of Jesus while we talk about things we have learned or things we have taught? What do you, how do you think that goes together? Has anybody ever thought that Jesus is a good teacher? Have you ever thought that? What kind of things have Je has Jesus taught us? What does he teach us? He teaches us to love. What else has Jesus taught us to do? To be safe, that's right. That's another good thing we learned from Jesus. Jesus was a great teacher. When he was alive, he taught his disciples all the time. But he did it through stories, and he did it by allowing them to watch. Jesus didn't say, just that he, just didn't, didn't, just, ugh, he didn't just teach people to go out and love people. He actually showed them how to do that, right? And we get to do that every day. Jesus shows us how to love because we see Jesus' love, right? When we read those stories or we remember, and then we look at our pictures. I think they look all kinds of love, don't they? Well, that brings me to our next very special thing today. We have a special gift for two of you. So, Danica and Addie, will you both come forward for me? So Danica and Addie, come out here. The rest of you can watch because some of you have already gotten your Bibles before, right? And some of you are still waiting for a few years, but everybody in this church gets a special gift like that at some point. Pretty cool, huh? So I have a gift for each of you, and I wrote your name so I would remember. Okay, so we have these gifts for you today. I want you, when you open these gifts, to remember a couple of things. First of all, these gifts are very, very old. The Bible has been around for thousands of years. It has been written in all kinds of other languages. It has been told over and over and over again. So it's a very old, old gift. It's also a gift full of stories. Just like we just said, Jesus used all kinds of stories to teach us. And there are stories by Jesus and stories by others in there that will help you, that will guide you, that will comfort you, that will teach you, right? This book is also very valuable. It's full of really important, awesome stuff that will just help you to be the best person you can be, right? The best person that God created you to be. And then last of all, I want you to take a big breath in and then blow it out. Do you feel this space that we are in right now? We are in God's house right now. And the Bible is God's house that you can carry around with you. All those words in there, all those things that you get to learn, it all comes from God. And so it's a great reminder that no matter where you go or what you do, God is all around all the time, right? So go ahead and open up your gifts. You can put the papers down on the ground. There we go. There you go. So there is your very own Bible. So if you look at the very first page, it has your name in it. It has the from our church on there. It will tell you forever that this church loves you so much that we wanted you to have this. Pretty cool, huh? How many people in our congregation today still have their third grade Bibles? 
Look at that. You all just became part of a very cool group of people. Do you guys do? Okay, yes, and we have some here too. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, hold on to these for a minute. I, I noticed that there's some people trying to take your picture, so can you like hold them front and center so they can get your picture right here in church, holding your Bible up. I, I want to make sure we capture what we need to, because it's important to remember that. I'm going to talk about my third grade Bible later in the sermon. One of the things that we do by, thank you both, by giving them these Bibles is to welcome them into that group of people who have the ability to read them, and it's exciting. But also for you all to remember that you support the children as they're growing in their faith. And I would like to have you please respond with a prayer you see here. We rejoice in this step in your journey with God. We pray God will guide you, your family, and us as you use this Holy Bible in your home, in your church school classes, and in our worship. We will learn together and grow in our love for God's word. Amen. We're excited that you are getting your Bibles, and I think you all are headed off to, off to Sunday, school. Sunday school. And cook. Is this cooking day? Yes. We're excited about that. while I have breath to pray, I'll turn to you. Oh Lord, while I have breath to pray, I'll offer prayers to you. We lift up our prayers in this time and in this place as we celebrate the gift of children and the gift of your word. We pray that they will be able to look into your word and find their comfort, find their challenges, and find their stories, the stories that help us to understand your love for us. Remind us all of that precious gift and help us to turn to your pages to understand better our own faith journey. We come today to remember that Jesus was a teacher, one of the greatest teachers of all times. Help us to think about that. Think about what it means to say Jesus is teacher. In the midst of these days, help us to remember not only that Jesus was a teacher, but the things that he taught us including this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our offerings go to support many different things in the life of the church, and one of those is things like Bibles for children and Sunday school supplies, all kinds of things that we do here in the life of the church. So I hope as the ushers come to receive your gifts and offerings that you'll remember all the good that we do in the world. Our offertory hymn is called Jesus the Teacher, and it's from the Christian hymnal. And what I was able to do is take this beautiful text that I found, um, and, and it is set in a, a nice melody as well, and I hope you'll, um, you'll see that melody in the uh, insert in the bulletin. But I also was able to take two verses from other hymns that we're more familiar with using the metrical index and insert them into Jesus the Teacher. This is our offertory hymn, Jesus the Teacher.
should forgive. He taught us to refrain from strife and showed us how in love to live. No bitter tone, no angry blow, no weapon save his precious word. No empty pomp, no gaudy show, he gently leads us by his love. He taught us when by man oppressed to offer him the other cheek, to pray in spirit, faith possessed, and his forgiving love to seek, for angry word has never yet a heartache healed, a will subdued, nor made a sinner turn and set his heart on God with faith endued. Oh, teach me, Lord, that I may speak in living echoes of thy tone. As thou hast sought, so let me seek thine erring children lost and lone. Oh, teach me, Lord, that I may teach the precious things thou dost impart, and wing my words that glowing word thy love to tell, thy praise to Spirit, O Lord, on these thy gifts, the gifts that we return to you. We ask your blessing upon each person in this place, on each giver, and on the work that we do in this world. Amen.
The scripture today is from Luke chapter 2, verses 41 through 52. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it, but supposing him to be in the company, they went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when they saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been looking for you anxiously. And he said to them, How is it that you sought me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying which he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor, favor with God and man. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks Judy. I will wait in a minute. Excuse us. <laughs> After I ask them, when I circulate with them while I'm doing that, Sometimes we, we on Fridays work really hard to make sure that Sunday is good. And usually it works really well. Like today, it's gonna work well, you'll see. So today we're continuing the Freeing Jesus series. Uh, Freeing Jesus, talking about Jesus as teacher today. A couple of things I want to tell you. One, as Larissa noted, you'll see the pictures of the, that the children drew incorporated with some of our others. It was fun to see them as they came in laughing about and feeling proud that they had contributed to the worship of the church. So if you see them later, you might say good job to them or ask them which picture was theirs or talk to the children of the church. The other thing, someone said to me the, today, I didn't bring my Jesus in. Well, it's not too late. We're gonna do Jesus for two more Sundays, so feel free to bring your Jesus to add to the display, whatever you may have. We would love to add those things in to the display, I guess, of Jesus. And if you wanna bring it during the week, then we have time to work on it, but if not, Sunday is fine, and we'll figure out a way to put your Jesus up for display over the next two weeks. And I saw someone else laugh at me when I said, after the next two weeks, then we're done with Jesus. I didn't really mean that the way uh, it sounded. We're never done with Jesus. But today we're talking about Jesus as teacher. And the scripture that Judy read for us is one that I remember as a child liking because it's one of the very few stories of Jesus as a, baby, as a young person. It's one that children hear and they say, oh, Jesus was like us. Jesus went to church and people learn things from Jesus. And it's a way of helping kids see that Jesus can be for them too. I also would tell you that Jesus as teacher was the chapter I was most looking forward to because that's what I think of as Jesus as teacher. We'll work through that a little bit here in the next few minutes though and see where I am now. But I wanted to ask you all to share with me where you learned about Jesus. Where or from whom did you learn about Jesus? Where'd you learn about Jesus? Sunday school, thank you. Anybody remember the name of their Sunday school teacher? I had Mrs. Sweet and Mrs. Sutherland, I remember. Your mother, very good. Anybody else, where did you learn about Jesus? Your granny, oh, that's a good Jesus learner right there. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? I'm sorry? Your mother and father, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anybody else, where'd you learn about Jesus? Grandfather. Grandfather, mm-hmm. Kansas Wesleyan, good. Anybody else want to claim a Wesleyan? Indiana Wesleyan? From the nuns, you learned about Jesus, a different kind of Jesus, maybe, <laughs> at nativity school. Anybody else want to share where they learned about Jesus? 
I'm sorry, summer Bible school, vacation Bible school, of course. I learned about a different kind of Jesus at Isle of School of Theology. Different Jesus there. Anybody else? Places or people you learned about Jesus? Tony Gray and the Transformation Sisters class. Thank you. Good one. Anybody else? Billy Graham. Billy Graham. Just a closer walk with thee. Yes, Billy Graham. That's a great place to learn about Jesus. Anybody else? Youth retreats. Youth retreats. We learned about Jesus as youth at youth retreats. Chris. Church camp. That was the thing back in the day, wasn't it? I had loved church camp. Kids today often go to mission trips and learn about Jesus there. Thank you, thank you, Brian. Anybody else? Where have you learned about Jesus? Right here in this building. Thank you. One of the things and ways that I, thank you, Brian, I appreciate it. Oh, someone messed up my order. One of the ways that I learned about Jesus was this. Did anyone else have these when you were growing up? So I went and asked Larissa and she said, I've got one, so I'm gonna share it with you. Let's see if you all remember the felt board Jesus. There was a man named Zacchaeus and he was very excited. I wish whoever, someone, I have my story all right now. He was very excited because he heard Jesus was coming to town. So he went to see what was happening, but Zacchaeus was short and he couldn't see over the crowd and he was very sad because he really wanted to see Jesus. Then he noticed up here in the corner the sycamore tree. So Zacchaeus climbed up the sycamore tree. Why? For the Lord, he wanted to see her. We all know that. So he's up there and then Jesus comes by and he says, Zacchaeus, come down, for I'm coming to your house today. Did you, any of you hear that story growing up just like this? I was sharing this with Michael the other day, and I said, and we have to do this. You can't just plop, the, right? Or I see people nodding. You can't just go this. You have to. And that's how we learned about Jesus when I was growing up. And Zacchaeus was happy, and it was all a good story. That's what I thought Jesus was for a while as a child, uh, this little felt Jesus. Only when I was growing up, he was brown and beige. And different. There was no color, it was all browns. That's what the Methodist publishing house thought children needed was this. Anyway. So this is how we learned about Jesus. Today, kids can learn about Jesus in all kinds of ways, including Lego Bible. I began to mutter. He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. Isn't that great? How many of you have seen Lego Jesus before? There's all kinds of stories on, you can just Google on YouTube, you can Google though, Lego Bible stories, and there's tons of them. But I thought, you know, to stay consistent, we would do some more Zacchaeus. There's a lot of great stuff out there for kids today to learn Bible stories. And we might chuckle a little bit about Lego Jesus, but any of you who have children or grandchildren, nieces or nephews know that Legos are a part of their life. They love Legos. So why not Lego Jesus? Much better probably than felt born Jesus. Jesus as teacher. We like the idea of learning from Jesus. We want our children to read those Bibles, to go down to children's Sunday school to learn about Jesus. Because we think of the things that Jesus taught us as teacher, no matter how you might have learned those lessons. Jesus taught us about rules, didn't he? Maybe the golden rule for one, but other rules that we learn about how to be ethical, how to be moral people, how to be in this world in right ways. And that's kind of the part of Jesus I like, following the example and the stories of Jesus. Jesus taught us about the commandments. 
In Sunday school, how many of you remembered? I had to memorize the Ten Commandments, and I, then I got a ruler with them on it. And I thought to myself back then, why don't you just give me the ruler? But I had to memorize the Ten Commandments. Anybody else have to memorize those growing up? Nope. I won't ask you to do it to prove it, because I'm sort of shaky myself. So we learned the commandments, but Jesus said there's a better commandment, didn't he? Beyond those Ten Commandments, and he taught us the great commandment, or the commandment that says, love your neighbor as yourself. You remember that one? Or love the Lord your God with your heart and your soul and your mind. How many of you have learned that? And those are easier to remember than the ten. We learned that. We learned about Jesus' life. We read the gospel stories that tell us about his life. And we go, wow, that was amazing. I can follow some of these examples. I should follow all, but I'll try my best. As we get older, we really get intrigued with the parables. The parables are stories that don't necessarily explain themselves that fit in our lives in different ways and times and places. Stories that are a mystery to us that help us understand in our own way who Jesus is and his lessons. I've always liked those parables. Jesus taught us what it means to be a follower because he tells us over and over again, if you follow, you'll do this. And we learn from Jesus. We learn. Many of you grew up in the church, and some of you are new to church. But those of you who grew up in the church, who have 40 or 50 years or 60 years or 70 years or more of hearing the stories of Jesus, I want to ask you a question. If you think about those, just a quick in your mind, do you think you do a good job of following what Jesus taught you to follow? You don't have to raise your hand. Those stories are for a reason. With our children, we want them to learn from Jesus this. Jesus loves you. And that's what Jesus teaches our children. Larissa works on that over and over again. It helps them know that there is some place. And for many of them, it's this place but that they understand that Jesus is important because Jesus loves them. If you haven't had a chance, make sure you look at their artwork because it says things like, he is nice. Or it says things like, he is good. Or I love you. And there's one, let's see, over that way, you can maybe see, or if you ha can't right now, make sure you walk by. There's a picture of a tornado and a volcano and crossed swords, I believe. And Larissa said, where is Jesus in this picture? Nice picture, but where's Jesus? And the young man who drew that looked at her and said, Jesus is everywhere when there are bad things. Pretty good, huh? Pretty good. The things and lessons that we learn from Jesus. When we called Jesus teacher, that was a term of respect back in the Bible days. Rabbi it wasn't really thought of in the same way that we might think of teacher today. It was a religious term, a term of high standing, important. So when they call Jesus rabbi, that brings a lot of respect with that term. Sometimes today when we hear the word teacher, we don't think of a profession that's well respected and that's unfortunate. My daughter is a teacher in the Seattle Public Schools. I know some of you here in this room have been teachers. And things have changed. Respect isn't always part of the world for teachers. The Seattle teachers just went out on strike right at the very beginning of the school year. And people were very upset, she said, that when she was out picketing, the people, things people would say about, just teach our kids. What's wrong with you? Things like that. And maybe some of you who are teachers have heard things like that. But one of the main reasons that they went out on strike in Seattle this year was to say, we need better support for our paraprofessionals. We need to not have <clears throat> one person managing 70 IEPs, because you can't. We need people in the classroom who can help the kids who have been mainstream but can't manage without someone by an aide by their side. They need to have tools like a computer. We respect what the paraprofessionals do in our classroom, and we want them to have help. That seems right to me. 
course, it was my child, but still, doesn't that seem right? And, and for those of you in this congregation who are teachers, it's not what it was even 10, 15 years ago. It's different nowadays. I'm going to pick on Tula. I didn't ask you first, but I will. It, recently, we were talking, and you said that one of the things that surprised you in elementary school was having to teach children respect for each other and for the teachers. You talked about each other, not the teachers. Wow. That's hard, isn't it? That's hard to imagine. Many of us, when we were hitting elementary school, we showed respect for our teachers or we would go home and learn how to be respectful to our teachers. But we just did that. My Sunday school teachers, remember I said Mrs. Sweet and Mrs. Sutherland? They didn't have first names. Mrs. was her name. And that was a sign of respect. I don't know that we should go back to that necessarily, but teaching is a profession that we should respect. In this room, we have teachers. We also have engineers, some of you. We have some musicians, we have some business people, we have some, I don't know what all, scientists, we got, that should cover a lot of you. Um, we've got lawyers, I forgot the lawyers. <laughs> lawyers, sorry, all the lawyers in the room, there are several of you as well. I would not forget you. You all need church, you lawyers. We're glad you're here. Uh, we have all kinds of things, but do you know what all of these professions that we called out started with? Teachers. Teachers teaching you basics. Teachers teaching you to learn. Teachers causing us to say, wow. I can look back in my life and see some teachers that meant a lot to me, a lot to me. I respected them, and if it weren't for them, I probably wouldn't be here today because they taught me things I needed to know to do my job, reading, the basics of math. But more than anything, they taught me the quest for learning, to continue to be a lifelong learner. I, I've talked to many of you in this congregation, and I love that about this church. We want to learn things. We want to have speakers and go and see what they can teach us. We want to read together. We want to talk together. We want to learn because we know and see that as the key to our future always. We want to respect teachers because of that knowledge base. And so I thought about, well, we just said te Jesus was a teacher and one that's amazing. How do I show then my respect? for Jesus as a teacher. And this is where my idea of liking Jesus as teacher, the best of all these chapters, started to concern me a bit. Because if I think I need to respect Jesus as a teacher, just as I respect some other teachers in my life, how do I go about that? Understanding what Jesus taught me and following those lessons that I learned. Is there any better way to respect a teacher than to say, wow, that which you have given me is something I want to live out into the world, that I want to continue to grow up from. Is there anything greater than that? Well, Jesus said to do all of these things. Jesus taught us by example and taught us by words of how we should live in this world. And if I respect Jesus as teacher, what should I do? Follow those, live those out. And for me as pastor, one of the things that reminds me of that is not only should I live those out, but I should help you all live those out to encourage you to say, this is what Jesus taught us, to care for the least, the last and the lost to love God, to help make disciples in the world, to care for people. I think we do a pretty good job of that. It's good that this fell on the same day that Belinda was here to tell you all the ways that we can help in the world. But are we, each one of us individually, 
remembering what Jesus taught us and respecting Jesus as teacher. Are we doing that? Can we do more? Can we show respect in a greater way? Throughout this series on Jesus, different little pieces and words of songs have come to me. And, and this week I kept thinking of the song and it took me forever to find it, but there's a song called, It Is the Cry of My Heart. Some of you might know it. It's kind of a praise song. And it says, teach me your holy ways, O Lord, that I would be holy, acceptable to you. Teach me your holy ways, O Lord. And so I've all week been hearing that, praying that in my mind and thinking about it. It's not just enough to ask Jesus to teach me, but for me to say I will follow those ways all of my life, that I will follow that. I pray for you all this week an opportunity. It's about teachers, so maybe homework is in line to think about things you learned from all those amazing people that you mentioned and called out, to think about them and what they taught you about Jesus, and then to live it out fully this week. Amen. I look forward to singing our closing song together. But before we do that, I'm going to move this right quick. And I'd like to <coughs> let you know that um, the music that I've been playing today is by Florence Price, and um, I got kind of cued into the organ music of Florence Price um, by uh, Katie Howe, and um, I had heard the name before, but I didn't realize how much organ music she had written. She was born in the 1880s and died in the 1950s. Um, an African-American woman whose grandparents on her father's side were freed slaves. You might have heard a little bit of jazz influence um, in the two pieces I've played for you before. And our closing piece, the, um, the postlude, is more of the European tradition. But she was one of the first, um, or she was the very first woman uh, to have a, a full symphony that she composed, performed by um, a national um, symphony orchestra here in the United States. Um, and so that's, uh, that's a wonderful thing. And she was able to study at the, it's not Cincinnati School of Music, I don't remember where it was, but it was a big name school, uh, New England Conservatory of Music. Um, and so th this, all the music today that I've been playing is by Florence Price, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Let's stand and sing our closing hymn. We'll sing it twice because it's just a single verse long. As we part for the towns and cities, as you are able, would you please be upstanding? <laughs> don't be afraid to stand up early. <laughs> This is as we part for the towns and cities. Here we go. As we part for the towns and cities Where you summon us to go Guide us, Lord, give us strength and courage Teach us all we need to know Keep us humble, fixed on you, forever seeking, born on you. Kindle holy fires within us, may your Holy Spirit glow. As we part for the towns and cities where you summon us to go, guide us, Lord, give us strength and courage, teach us all we need to know, keep us humble, fixed on you, forever seeking, born on you. Kindle holy fires within us, may your holy spirit glow. Go from this place remembering the lessons of Jesus, respecting Jesus as teacher. Go in peace. Amen.